The year was 1969. Nissan Motors had been selling cars in the U.S. market for about a decade. These cars, known as Datsuns, were known for being thrifty, economical, and not very exciting. Then everything changed with just one letter. U.S. President Yutaka Katayama, known as Mr. K to his colleagues, was afraid that the fair lady name would be seen as a secretary's car. He wanted to call it 240Z. When the cars arrived in America, Katayama himself went down to the docks, chiseled off the fair lady badging, and applied the now famous Z moniker. What followed was 40 years of one of America's iconic sports cars. designing the car, I was with Mr. K and Pennon Farina, who's the Italian car designer. They met in the office, and Mr. K was fond of the style of the old XKE Jag, and he and Pennon Farina sketched this car, as you can see it right now, with the front buffer on it. Katayama was more than a sales guy. He believed in the product and drove it accordingly. He quickly made fast friends with the local police. He loved to take this car and go up to San Simeon and places like that, and he liked to go fast. Well, uh, one trip in particular, he had Jean LaPlante that went with him and he raced, and every time, uh, and they were out on one Highway 1, and he said, Jean, open her up. And he did, and here comes the Highway Patrol. Mr. K laid the seat back on the passenger side and put his glasses on, pretending he's asleep, and Jean says, I'm going to get a ticket. And he said, so? You were the one speeding, not me. And I had to pay for it out of petty cash. <laughs> as soon as the 240Z hit American shores, it was a hit. Former Datsun sales executive Bob Link and San Diego Nissan sales manager Fred Jordan recall the times. We made the projections, and yes. Uh, and we were always pleading for more cars. It had adequate horsepower. I think it was like 125 horsepower or something like that originally. And you could go 125 miles an hour just as easy you know, with that car stock. Jerry Hirschberg, former head of Nissan Design America, recalls what made the original 240Z connect with sports car fanatics. Uh, that wasn't sporty, it wasn't sport-like, it wasn't, gee, it's almost just like, it's the real thing. Katayama's desire was to have the Z be a hit at the dealership, but also on the racetrack. When Mr. K brought the 240 in, uh, one of the prime things was to give U.S. a sports car. The other thing, he definitely had racing in mind. Hi, I'm John Morton, and this is the 240Z we've won so many races with. Now, this one's been specially modified for racing. But many of the features that make this car a champion on the racetracks also make it an excellent performer in the street. Power, for instance. There's a 2.4 liter overhead cam engine up there, and it really moves out. The handling is special, too, with fully independent rear suspension. And the Datsun has big disc brakes up front. When you're going this fast, I wouldn't have it any other way. Best of all, Datsun is more than just a fine racing machine. It's a luxurious GT car with all the trimmings. After all, there's more to life than winning races. The Datsun Z's victories on the racetrack gave it legitimacy on the showroom floor. The Z quickly became an ongoing commercial success for Datsun, often outselling the iconic Chevrolet Corvette. But as the Z evolved, Datsun found it also needed to cater to the fashion of the era. Datsun offers black gold. black gold. The 10th anniversary Datsun 280ZX. Very few will possess its limited number. So lavishly appointed, there are virtually no options. The 10th anniversary 280ZX is Datsun, driven to the ultimate. Fortunately, Disco died. 
while the Z lived on. Through the 1980s, the Z's performance continued to improve, and the race wins continued to pile up. The 300ZX that appeared in 1990 changed the world's perception of a Japanese sports car. There's a rock and roll quality to the Z. There always has been. I mean, it's not surprising when you go back and you start looking at the movies that we've used in. The one hiccup in the Z's life came in the mid-1990s. The Japanese economic bubble had burst, the dollar was weak against the yen, and Nissan was billions in debt. The car was simply too expensive to keep. For six dark years, the Z vanished off the American landscape. Then came Carlos Ghosn, his Nissan revival plan, and a new Z. Like many people in North America, my impression of Nissan was based almost solely on one car, the Z. It was a terrific car. I often drove one. It was a 1990 model. The styling was great, the performance outstanding, and it was extremely reliable and affordable. I loved driving it. Yeah, I remember when I was fighting to resurrect the Z at a time when nobody was talking about that, one of the things I put in one of my messages was that, for God's sake, we're the only company that owns a letter of the alphabet. We've got to do this. You can't buy that. You can't make that happen. You can't advertise it into existence. The car and the, and the romance around it did that. Our bold new Z had the opportunity to become an icon for Nissan once again. It's cutting edge styling and technology. It's a concrete illustration of the new Nissan. The resurrection of the Z is seen by many as a symbol for Nissan's revival. Sales have been brisk as lovelorn Z owners have returned to the fold. This year marks the 50th anniversary of Nissan motor activity in America. Next year marks the 40th anniversary of the Z. One can only imagine what the next decade will bring for both. For Automotive News, I'm Mark Rexton.